Hello and welcome back to the Chronicles of Aguna, the Arsenal podcast brought to you by the last man standing with loserpool.com. As ever, I'm your host, Harry Simu, and on this edition, which is episode 67, I believe, uh, 67 full-length episodes. Wow, that's gone by quick, hasn't it? But we're going to be looking back on the victory up at Turf Moor, as well as doing some number crunching. We'll be comparing our numbers this season to our numbers of last season and trying in some ways to measure the progress that we've seen throughout this Premier League campaign. Now, of course, it's impossible to fully judge Unai Emery's first season, isn't it, without um, having played that Europa League final. That is so huge. And the difference between getting Champions League qualification and not getting it for me anyway is huge when when assessing how well this manager's done so I'm going to hold fire on that but we're going to look back at Burnley and of course we're going to do some number crunching as I've said let's start up at Turf Moor where the Gunners ran out 3-1 victors over Sean Dyche's Burnley side let's start with Unai Emery's team selection as we always do in goal it was Bernd Leno. Uh, Licksteiner started at right back with a central defensive pairing of Mustafi and Mavropanos. Nacho Monreal filling in at left back. In the centre of midfield, it was that dynamic duo, Mohamed Elneny and Matteo Genduzzi, with Mikitarian, Willock and Iwobi providing support to Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang. It was a pretty strong bench for Arsenal. Czech, Koscielny, Lacazette, Maitland-Niles, Kalasinac, Xhaka and Enketia were the substitutes. Now, we needed to match Manchester United's result in order to stay in fifth place. And when you think about it, thinking about United's game, you know, at home to Cardiff, you'd expect them to win that against the already relegated Cardiff. And Arsenal on the road haven't been great. So, understandably, there were some supporters that were a little bit nervous about that one. Um, but ultimately, United slipped up and, and Arsenal done their job anyway. And so, we have cemented fifth place, which in some people's eyes... Is a good achievement, um, in my opinion, given the way the season's panned out. It's a bit of an underachievement, and I'm a little bit disappointed, but we're going to come on to that a bit later on. Now, in terms of the game itself, not much to report from the first half. Um, both sides hit the woodwork uh, once each. Aubameyang hitting the post uh, from a header. I think it was from a Mkhitaryan cross, and then, of course, Burnley went close to opening the scoring themselves. But it wasn't until the second half when the game sprung to life. Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang... Uh, benefiting from a, a Burnley mistake at the back. He was through on goal and he was never going to miss from there. Uh, the second goal from Arsenal came from an Alex Iwobi uh, cross. It was a fantastic cross and Aubameyang emphatically volleyed it home, back across the goal, back across the keeper and into the back of the net. Burnley then pulled one back just two minutes later, thanks to some comical defending at the back as we've come to, to get used to this season. And then, of course, Eddie Nketiah got his first Premier League for the club. Uh, Premier League goal, sorry, for the club on the 94th minute in stoppage time. So Arsenal running out 3-1 winners. Um, you know, and, and I guess the main story and the big thing to take away from that is that, of course, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang uh, got his two goals and, and that makes him the joint golden boot winner along with Liverpool's Sadio Mane and Mohamed Salah. But he did miss an absolute sitter and an opportunity to be the clear golden boot winner. And he'll be kicking himself when he watches that back. I know he's been saying, you know, proud to share it with my brothers and three African players sharing the golden boots. That's a huge achievement for them, of course. Um, but he'll be bitterly disappointed because he will know deep down that it should have been his and his alone. Now, in his post-match interview, Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang was asked to comment on the fact that he'd become the joint golden boot winner along with Mane and of course Salah and he had this to say I'm happy we won and I'm sharing this trophy with two other guys I like my teammates knew about the golden boot I said nothing I did not want them to play and only focus on me I'm a team player the team have had a great season but last month it has not been the best in the league so Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang acknowledging there that obviously our form has dipped and I don't think anyone can can deny that or hide from that fact now of course Arsenal finished fifth as I've already mentioned um, and that means that we do miss out on an automatic Champions League qualification place we do go straight into the Europa League group stage but of course as already mentioned that Europa League final is around the corner and that gives us an opportunity to get back into the Champions League promised land now just a few stats uh, some of the best stats as taken from the BBC Sport website following on this game now Burnley have lost each of their last 10 meetings with Arsenal 
in all competitions. Arsenal haven't lost on the final day of a Premier League season since the 2004-2005 campaign at Birmingham. The Gunners have won their final game of the season 18 times. No side has done more so. Arsenal have kept just one clean sheet away from home in the Premier League this season. Their fewest in a single top flight campaign since 1967-1968. Eddie Nketiah is the first teenager to score a Premier League goal for Arsenal since Alex Iwobi netted against Watford in April 2016. Aubameyang is only the second Premier League player to score 30 plus goals in all competitions this season after Sergio Aguero. So just some interesting facts there following on from that game. And as I said, not much else to report. Um, Eddie Nketiah will be pleased that he was able to get a goal. Um, Willock had a very decent game as well in the midfield. And interestingly, a few people have pointed out that um, Mohamed El Nenny and Licksteiner were, were sort of, appeared to be saying their goodbyes to the Arsenal fans. I think we expect both of them to move on in the summer um and you know fingers crossed we can get some stronger replacements in uh but yeah that that that's it really to report from from turf more not a great deal to talk about of course all eyes were were on uh, brighton and of course anfield where the title was ultimately decided now with the league campaign coming to an end now is probably as good a time as any to look at some numbers let's do some number crunching let's um Try and use the stats and the facts to assess whether or not there has been progress this season under Unai Emery's leadership. Now, I fully subscribe to the idea that arguments shouldn't be based totally on stats. I think they can be misleading at times. And I think often people can select the particular stats that suit their argument and put those across only. And I, I think that... That's slightly unfair. So whilst I don't think it's the be all and end all, it's a good place to start when having a debate. So if we look at Arsenal's points total this season, Arsenal finished on 70 points. That's seven more than we finished on last season, where we, of course, registered 63 points last season. We ended sixth this season. We finished up in fifth. So uh, the difference being a league position and, of course, seven points. So there has been progress. But the question is, and the question that I want to ask you guys is, has there been enough progress? And I'd like to hear from you guys on this one. I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments section. If you're listening via the audio, you can, of course, tweet us at Chronicles underscore AFC. So Arsenal have registered seven more points than last season, um, finished fifth instead of sixth. But ultimately, we're still not qualified for the Champions League. So I'd like to hear what you guys think on that. I think personally that it depends how you look at it. Because I think there have been games this season where we've perhaps had the rub of the green compared to last season. But in terms of being able to, com uh, to, sorry, to perform on a consistent basis, I've not seen a whole lot of difference to the Arsenal that we've been watching for the past few years. On their day can be fantastic, can turn teams over, but equally can be so bad and so shocking and so devoid of ideas. So in terms of progress, in my view, there's been some you could argue, though, there's not been enough. Now, defensively, I don't think there's any debate about this. I think it's clear that there's been absolutely no progress in this area. Arsenal conceded 51 goals in the Premier League last season. And lo and behold, we've conceded 51 goals in the Premier League this season. And, you know, we didn't have Socrates. Uh, we didn't have Torreira. We didn't have Bernd Leno. So you could argue that Unai Emery's underachieved in this in this department and you know it feels as though despite him going out and signing four defensive minded players and that's of course Leno, Licksteiner, Socrates, Torreira I've said this before throughout the season despite bringing those four in from a defensive standpoint we've not improved at all and there will be some of you out there that will sit there and say it's because we lost holding it's because we lost Bellerin and of course you should factor those in and for me the loss of Bellerin is the more significant one given that we didn't have a replacement and that we've had to play in Zlimate Lenars there and that Licksteiner has not turned out to be the Licksteiner that we thought we were signing. But Holding, for me, is still young. He's still a bit of a rookie. And in my opinion, whilst a loss like Rob Holding will have some impact on your season, it shouldn't derail you. I mean, we're Arsenal Football Club and, you know, he's by no means proven that he will be an elite centre-back. Yeah, he had a few good games at the start of the season. Looked pretty comfortable on the ball, etc., etc. 
But for me, he's not done enough in an Arsenal shirt for me to sit, sit there and say, the reason Arsenal have been so bad defensively is because we didn't have Rob Holding. I, I feel like that's just a bit of a cop-out. I feel like Unai Emery's side have not been drilled properly, have not been coached properly. I know there's been a lot of individual errors in there, but in terms of our shape and the way we set up, I still think there's a lot to be desired for. The way that our midfield leaves our defence so exposed is still a huge problem. So, you know, whilst I have a bit of sympathy for the manager in the sense that we lost some key players, um, and of course there have been a lot of individual errors, which he cannot be held accountable for, he still has to play his part. And in my view, he's not improved us defensively in the slightest. In fact, at times, we've been worse. And and so for me, unfortunately, in this section, Emery doesn't get a pass at the minute. Um, you know, like I said already, hopefully we win the Europa League, we get in the Champions League and we can build and all this will be kind of irrelevant. But I think it's important to pick out faults when assessing a season. Because if you don't understand your flaws, how are you ever going to improve on them? And I think Emery will know. I think Emery will be disappointed about the way his team have defended this season. He won't shy away from it. So I don't think as fans we should either. Now in terms of our offensive play um, in the 17-18 season, last season we scored 74. This season we scored 73. Again, fine margins. Almost identical. But considering how many goals Aubameyang and Lacazette have scored this season... You'd have expected to see a little bit more. I feel like we're not scoring goals from all over the park like we used to. Um, and I feel like at times our football's been a little bit negative. I feel like we've gone to certain grounds and we've kind of set up in a more pragmatic way. And I know on the one hand we were kind of calling for that last year. But on the other hand, we've proven, as the previous statistic shows, that we've not improved defensively. So having the strike force we have and the creative talent that we have... I'd have thought that Arsenal would have been a little bit more gung-ho at times this season. And I'm not saying that I want us to be shapeless and clueless and run around like headless chickens. But for me, it's a little bit disappointing that we've scored less goals than last season. Because last season, we only had a Bamiyang for half a season, remember? So, you know, Emery has had the benefit of having a more settled Lacazette. A Lacazette who's adapted to the Premier League. And a full season out of Pierre-Emery Bamiyang you'd have expected a little bit more. And I know lots of you are anti Mesa Ozil, but I do think we would have scored more had he been in the team more. I think we would have scored more had Aaron Ramsey been in the team more, particularly at the start of the season. So, you know, if we had improved defensively and as a result dropped off a little bit offensively, you can accept that. But we haven't improved defensively and we've not improved offensively. So, you know... You've got to you've got to look at it fairly, and and I think a lot of people are missing these points. And I think when people hear these numbers, many of you will be surprised by them. Now, one thing I have to give you and I Emery credit for is our ability to compete in the big games has certainly improved. Um, you know, there's there's definitely been improvement in that department. I'd be a liar if I was to sit there and say that wasn't the case. We got slaughtered at Anfield, of course, but aside from that, there were respectable performances at the other big away grounds. Probably should have won at Chelsea. Probably should have won at Spurs. Um, and of course, we beat United, Spurs and Chelsea all at home. So Unai deserves credit for that. It feels um, as though he was... I don't know if it's him motivating the players in a more effective manner before games like this. Or if the players are just naturally more motivated. I don't know what it is. But it feels like we came out in a lot of those games raring to go. And that was nice to see. We didn't have that defeatist attitude that we've shown in recent seasons against that type of opposition. So for that, Unai deserves credit at times. His pragmatism, for example, like when we went away to Spurs, has paid off. So, you know, I'd be completely off the mark if I was to sit here and just slate Unai Emery. There have been some positives and our form against the big teams has certainly been one of them. However, um, you know, my overriding feeling when looking back at this Premier League campaign is one of disappointment. Because given the circumstances, we should have finished in the top four. We could have quite easily finished in the top four. We only finished a point behind Spurs, who, let's face it, basically capitulated at the end of the season. I don't know if their focus drifted towards the Champions League, but we should have taken advantage and we haven't. So, you know, when you look back at the numbers, as I've done 
on this episode, it's clear to see that the progress has been minimal. There has been some progress, but it has been minimal. And I think that if you sit here and pretend that that's not the case, then you're just pulling the wool over your own eyes. Of course, if Unai Emery goes on and wins the Europa League, you'd say, yes, he's done his job and fair play to him. Hats off to him. He's got Arsenal back into the Champions League. That is what he was employed to do. But when we're talking about the Premier League campaign in isolation, we've not done enough. We've let ourselves down. And it's very, very disappointing that we've missed out on a top four finish, given the fact that United were so far behind us, given the fact that Tottenham have had a bit of a mini meltdown, given the inconsistencies that Maurizio Sarri and Chelsea have suffered from throughout the season, to have missed out because we dropped points against Palace, against Leicester, against Wolves and against Brighton is extremely disappointing. And I can't get away from that feeling at the moment. Of course, if we win the Europa League, that might change. I'll feel a lot better about myself and a lot better about the season as a whole. But on this episode, as I've said, we're looking at the Premier League campaign in isolation. And for me, it's been a disappointment. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Of course, you can tweet me at Chronicles underscore AFC. If you prefer to email, um, you can, of course, email us uh, ChroniclesAFC at gmail.com. Now, that brings us towards the end of another episode. Just a couple of updates uh, to, to put your way. Uh, of course, over the summer, the Chronicles of Aguna will be continuing on as we did last season. We'll be rumbling on through the summer. We'll be talking transfers. We'll be looking back at this season in more detail. We'll be doing individual player reviews. Um, and, of course, we'll be studying and dissecting Unai's first campaign in greater detail with a number of fantastic guests. So plenty to look forward to. Lots of content coming your way. We are hosting our second fans phone in this Thursday night. So that is, let me just check the date. That is Thursday, the 16th of May. If you are interested in taking part, all you need to do is DM us at Chronicles underscore AFC on Twitter. We will ask for your name and number and we will get you on the line during the show of course we'll try and get through as many callers as we possibly can held our first one last week after the Valencia game it was successful um, a few teething problems in terms of our technology but we've ironed those out now and we look forward to welcoming you guys back on and you guys putting your points across and having your say and of course challenging my view that's what I like you know if you disagree with me tell me about it let me know your feelings um, I'm always open to different opinions so I'm looking forward to that and like I said, if you want to take part, just DM us on Twitter at Chronicles underscore AFC. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button if you're watching on YouTube. If you're listening on iTunes or any other audio platform, feel free to leave us a review. That really, really helps. And we shall be back on Thursday with the fans phone in. Until then, guys, take care. <laughs>